So hello everyone, this is Robert from the Travel for Transition initiative. Um, we are at our first project in Portugal and um, I just want to share some of the insights that um, we got over the past three, four days staying here at, at, at this place and um, just sketching a bit from background toward, towards the transformation process to the vision how this particular project um, connects to the wider sustainability transition um, that we want to experience with um, all the projects we're visiting at Travel for Transition. So we found this particular project on um, helpx.net um, and this project is um, a small farm project um, close to Vendas Novas, which is around, it's about one hour away from um, Lisbon. And um, let me just start with, with some background uh, on the project. Um, so it's n about 19 hectares of farming land um, that used to be um occupied by 10 families in in the past um so they all had their own houses on on this um on this area and um in 1993 um the now owner of this project fernando holds a phd in marketing um bought the land and um put all these 10 houses Kind of demolished them or re kind of refur refurbished them and put them into one big house. And he describes this acquiring, this acquisition of land and this working on what he calls this magic land um, as his own return to a childhood dream. Because when he was young, his grandma um, used to have used to have such a place in the north of Portugal, um, such a farming space that he very very much enjoyed. And um, having now sort of finished his career um, in academia, um, he's now in his fifties. Um, he decided to take this step to return back to his childhood. So that much to to the background of. Um, our visited project. Um, let's move on to the second pillar of this description, of this story, basically, of this narrative, which is the transformational process. So, in any kind of, you know, transformation, here we just specifically look at sustainability. Um, we're interested in, you know, understanding the process from um, departure point A to the vision point B. And let's start with some um, financial aspects that are just needed for, for a transformation to succeed. Um, Fernando acquired EU subsidies. Um, two of his um, children work as professional farmers and therefore they could apply for um, EU subsidies for farming and agriculture. Um, and that's supplemented by, it's not enough, but it's supplemented by private savings um, that Fernando acquired um, throughout his career. And, um, and they, these financial assets are used together with um, a volunteering community to um, work on the land. So the volunteers they come from they come through different channels. Um, mainly three of them are um, HelpX, Workaway, and the Woofing platform. Um, the 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 volunteer the volunteer stay on this farm on this you know place is completely self organized. So um, the the only requirement really for volunteers to stay here is that they have a five days working week with 
five to six hours of work every day um, and two days off and they are on Thursday and Fridays because that's the days when Fernando leaves to Lisbon um, to do other work and um, and we sort of have the same we align with his schedule so we we take off on Thursday and Friday but work on on the weekend um, so the, the the task of the volunteers are mainly the transformation of land so you know working on this fertile arable land to cultivate um, to cultivate seeds plants um, to just basically maintain the land um, the second the second big task is the management of the, the place so you know taking care of the house um, cooking um, more communal um, aspects of living here so really taking care of the communal living and the third main aspect is um, building and construction so um, building own tools technology such as a greenhouse for example um, are also part um, of the volunteers task and the, the all tasks are self-organized so um, basically volunteers they they every morning they brief they're briefed by Fernando what could be done and then it's up to the volunteers how to organize how you know how big to form the groups to work on the specific task for the day mm. The so that was basically on the transformation process, um, which is heading towards a vision that Fernando describes as creating a self sustaining healing place. By self sustaining, he refers to the three domains of food, water, and energy. So, producing all the food required for the people to stay on this land. Um, all the water, potable water, um, irrigation water to come from the area collected on the farm area. And the third, the energy to use solar, a solar PV system to be completely off grid and supply enough energy for all the demands, be it Wi-Fi, be it electricity, be it the water pumping system etc and um, so that's the self-sustaining part of his vision and the healing place is connected to the idea that people from outside from the city for example from the urban environment can come experience this place and receive healing in a physical but also mental way to take this place as an opportunity to recharge to to reconnect to nature and uh, to other people and the community. Um, so in the future, um, unlike now where there's only volunteers staying at the farm, um, Fernando envisions to have guests stay over here at the farm, um, in kind of a lodging, a sort of a farm stay um, environment. So. Basically, what he envisions is the creation of a space that can both host people, but also events. So, someone knowledgeable, for example, about mushroom collection in the forest could offer a workshop on his space, on his place. And the people, for example, who stay in connection to the farm stay could then also join these workshops or could receive healing in form of a yoga uh, meditation session. Um, aside this sort of um, exper yeah, experiential aspect, he also wants to turn this into a viable small-scale business that sells products, uh, mainly agricultural producers, of course. Um, which are 
grapes. So he plants eight different edible grape species. Um, and he wants to use a variety of facets from producers such as grapes uh, for different products. So not only selling the edible grapes, but also transforming the leaves into, you know, sellable wine leaves or the grapes of lesser quality into wine. Um, and all these products being then offered to, for example, the people staying over um, at the lodge um, for sort of domestic consumption. And aside, he also keeps um, pigs and sheep. So for um, a very small scale meat production and um, maybe even in his idea, um, the vegetables coming from a small vegetable garden could be sold to people in Lisbon, which is just one hour away, um, in form of a vegetable box that people can just subscribe to on a weekly or monthly basis. And um, so products are then, as said, sold through a direct sale. So not, not commercializing it through supermarkets, through the retail chain, but just on a direct um, relationship with consumers and people and, and, and local citizens of the area, which primarily would then be Vendas Novas, which is a city about 10 kilometers away um, from his farm. And um, yeah, so that's all I wanted to share with you on this farm experience. Um, close to Vendas Novas in Portugal, having sketched a bit of background, the transformation process and the vision. And this is just the first podcast of a series of podcasts on transformational initiatives that we are visiting. And it might well be that there will be another one also on, on this initiative. Um, this is just a first try, you know, to, to communicate a, a story of um, such a project we've been visiting and if you have any feedback you know or ideas how this could become even more interesting even more valuable to you then please let us know at hi at travelfortransition.com um and yeah i look forward to you you know we look forward to all your feedback and um and maybe similar experiences thank you and see you at the next podcast <laughs>